this is Sarah and welcome to my crochet channel. Today's video I'm going to be showing you how to make a dog bone Christmas stocking and during the month of July we're going to have six different Christmas in July patterns. Now this stocking I wrote about seven years ago and I decided to put it out there have it retested and make a video for you. It's a really easy pattern. It's all stitched in double crochets, except for the bow is stitched in half double crochets, and it works up really quickly. It measures about 12 to 13 inches long and about eight inches at its widest point. Just sort of depends on how tightly that you stitch, how long it ends up being. But it works up quickly and you're really going to enjoy making this. Now the free crochet pattern is on my blog and you'll find that in the notes underneath this video. What you're going to need to make one of these stockings is you're going to need a off white, a cream, or some color that you want to use for the back of your stocking. And then you're going to need this and this is a metallic cream color yarn and this is I love this yarn in metallic from Hobby Lobby now you don't have to use this one you can do it all in solid without the metallic string going through it but I like it because it gives it just a little bit of a Christmas flair and you're gonna need about two ounces of each of those now you can do the front and the back in this or in this either way you're going to need a total of about five ounces of a color that you want to use. I used the metallic on the front and I used the cream on the back. All right, and then you're going to need a color for your bow. Now I used the red sparkle or metallic. I love this yarn from Hobby Lobby for this bow. For today's demonstration though, I'm going to use the green metallic just so that I have one in each color, one for each of my dogs. And it only takes about an ounce to an ounce and a half, depending on how long you want to make your bow. We're going to be stitching today with an eye hook. My eye hook is an I9, which is a 5.5 millimeter crochet hook. You'll need a needle for weaving in your ends and for sewing on your bow. And then you'll need a pair of scissors. So you're going to need to make two dog bones. You're going to need one for the back and one for the front. Now I've already completed the one for the back in this creamy color. And I'm going to set that aside. The front and the back are made exactly the same. The only difference is I'm choosing this metallic for the front of my dog bone stocking. We're going to begin with a slip knot and then we're going to chain 22 chains. Two twenty. 21 and 22. I have 22 chains. We're going to begin by stitching a double crochet in the fourth chain from the hook. One, two, three, four. Yarn over, go in that fourth chain, pull up a loop, yarn over, go through the first two, yarn over and go through the second two. So now I have two double crochets because my chain three counted as my first double crochet. So now I'm going to stitch five more double crochets. That way I have a total of seven double crochets. One, two, three, four, five, six. I need one more. And now I'm going to stitch one single crochet in the next 
six chains. We put our yarn, our hook through, <laughs> and pull up a loop, yarn over, and go through those two loops. That's a single crochet. So there's one, two, three, four, five, and six. Now we're going to stitch one double crochet in these last seven chains. One, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. Now we're going to chain three. <clears throat> chain three and turn and you can see that it's taller then it goes in and then it's taller and that's just going to give us the shape of the end of our dog bone all right for row two our chain three does count as a double crochet but we're going to stitch right in that first stitch because I want to increase by one at the beginning and we'll do the same at the end so that we go from 20 stitches to 22. So now we're going to just stitch one double crochet in each stitch across. I'm stitching one double crochet in each double crochet, one double crochet in each single crochet, and then one double crochet in each double crochet. All right, I'm almost to the end of the row. And then when we get to that last stitch, we're going to stitch two double crochets. Whoopsie, a little knot there. There we go, in that last stitch. And of course that last stitch is that chain three and we're going to stitch two double crochets in the top of that chain three. We'll go ahead and chain three. And we went from 20 stitches to 22. Now for row three, there's chain three, it does count as our first double crochet, but we're not going to put a stitch in that first stitch. We're going to go to the next stitch because we're not increasing. And we're just going to stitch one double crochet in each of the double crochets across. So I completed row three. I have 22 double crochets, stitching one double crochet in each double crochet. For the next two rows, chain three, turn, and one double crochet in each double crochet across. And we're going to repeat this for row four and row five so that we have two more rows of one double crochet in each double crochet across, chain three, turn, one double crochet in each double crochet across. So we're just repeating what we did on row three for two more rows. I completed row four and five exactly like I did row three. One double crochet in each double crochet across, chain three, and turn. Now at the end of row five, we're only going to chain one. And that's because we're going to decrease 
on the ends by just stitching a slip stitch. And so what we'll do is in the first stitch, we're just gonna stitch a slip stitch. And the way you do that is you just go in the stitch, pull up a loop, and then pull that loop through the loop that's already on your hook. And then we're going to double crochet in the next stitch. And then we'll double crochet in each double crochet across until we reach that last double crochet. And then we'll slip stitch in the last double crochet. And this is just bringing us back down from 22 double crochets to 20. And again, it's so that we can shape the end of our dog bone stocking. Okay, almost to the end there. There we go. Sometimes a little me metallic thread going through there can get caught. So we have to kind of watch that as we work. But I do love using the metallic thread. All right, so there's my double crochet. I'm going to slip stitch in this last stitch and chain one. And that's how it should look at this point. Here's the shape at the top of our bone. Then we go around and it kind of shapes a little here. And that's how it should look after row six. All right, we did that chain one and we're going to turn our work. All right, now we're going to go to the, we're going to skip that slip stitch and we're going to slip stitch in the next four double crochets. So there's one, two, three, and four. And now we're going to do that center section of our dog bone. So I'm going to chain three, one, two, three, and then I'm going to double crochet in the next 13 stitches. One, two, three, four, All right, there's 10, 11, 12, and 13. And we're going to leave those last three double crochets in that slip stitch unstitched. And you're going to have 14 double crochets because this chain three counts as our first double crochet. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14 because the chain three counts is our first double crochet. We're going to chain three, turn our work, and now we're going to stitch one double crochet in each double crochet across. And again, the chain three counts as our first double crochet. So we'll have 14 double crochets. And you can see how it's forming the center portion of the dog bone. So now what we're going to do is repeat this row, one double crochet and each double crochet across, 
chain three and turn for five more rows. Now, this dog bone stocking measures about 12 to 13 inches. If you want it to be longer, you can add more rows at this point through the middle. If you're making this for a bigger dog and you want to be able to put some long treats in there that are going to fit, you can add more rows. But for the pattern, you need to add five more rows of one double crochet in each double crochet across, chain three, turn, and repeat. And you'll have a total of seven rows in between, which will get you up to row 14. So let's continue to repeat till we get to row 14. So I have stitched my rows up through row 14. You still should have 14 double crochets. And at the end of this row, we're going to chain four. And we're going to turn. Now this row, we're going to be stitching slip stitches. And what we're doing is setting it up so we can do the other end of the dog bone. So we're going to slip stitch in the second chain, and then we'll slip stitch in those next two. And then we're going to slip stitch in each of the double crochets across. And what this is doing, as you can see, it's giving us something to stitch in without adding any extra double crochets so that it's set up for the top or bottom end of our dog bone stocking. All right, so now I'm at the end. I slip stitched in the last double crochet and now I'm going to chain five. And that's the way that that row should look. It looks a little wonky, but it's exactly the way that it should look. All right, let's do our 15. So we're gonna turn our work. We're going to place a double crochet in the fourth chain from the hook. One, two, three, four. Stitch a double crochet, and then we'll stitch a double crochet in the fifth. And that gives us three double crochets because the chain three counts as the first double crochet, and then we stitch two more. Now we're going to stitch one double crochet in each of those slip stitches moving back across the row. You'll have a little ridge there, but it won't matter. So I'm stitching one double crochet in each of the slip stitches that we placed in each of the double crochets on the previous row. All 
right now we're going oops it looks like I missed a, a stitch there let me check there we go and then we're going to stitch one double crochet in each of those slip stitches that we started with on those three chains. And then we'll chain three. All right, and so that's how it should look. Three double crochets, 14 double crochets across, and then three double crochets at the end, and that gets us back up to 20 double crochets. All right, so now we're going to chain three and we're going to turn. Now, we're going to increase from our 20 stitches to 22. So we're going to place a double crochet in the same stitch as our chain three, and then we'll place one double crochet in each double crochet across. And then we'll place two double crochets in the last double crochet. Now we're to our last double crochet, which is our chain three that counts as a double crochet, and we're going to stitch two double crochets. So now we've increased from our 20 to 22. Chain three and turn. And now we're not going to increase, so our chain three does count as our first double crochet, and we'll go to the next double crochet and just stitch one double crochet in each of the double crochets across. I completed that row, one double crochet in each double crochet across. I'm going to chain three and I'm going to repeat what I just did. So chain three, turn my work. Chain three counts as my first double crochet, so I'll go to my next one and stitch one double crochet in each double crochet across. So this is row 18. We stitched it exactly the same, one double crochet in each double crochet across. And instead of chaining three, we're just going to chain one. We're going to turn our work. We're going to slip stitch in the first double crochet. There we go, got caught on one of those strings. We're going to double crochet in the next stitch and in each stitch across and then we're going to slip stitch in the last stitch and what we're doing is we're just bringing it back down to 20 double crochets where we increased it to 22 there we go I'm stitching one double crochet in each 
double crochet across till I reach that last stitch and then I'm going to stitch a single or I'm sorry a slip stitch not a single crochet but a slip stitch Almost there, a few more double crochets. There we go. And now I'm just going to slip stitch in this last stitch, chain one, and turn. And now we're going to stitch like we did on this end. We're going to do seven double crochets, six singles, and then seven doubles. So we're going to skip that slip stitch and stitch a double crochet in that first double crochet and then we'll stitch six more so we'll have seven two three four five six seven one two three four five six seven now we're going to stitch six singles. And again, this is just giving us the shape of our dog bone on the ends. Let's make sure one, two, three, four, five, and one more is six. And then we'll double crochet in the last seven. One. <laughs> six and seven and we're not going to stitch in that last single crochet we're actually going to cut our yarn and we're just going to bring that down and tie that off and we'll go ahead and weave that in to the back And get that out of the way so we'll go one way back the other and then back through that's kind of the way I like to do it and so now we have a dog bone for the front and a dog bone for the back and now I'm going to show you how to put them together now you need to decide your front and your back and your inside and your outside. It's totally up to you. It really doesn't matter because when you're going back and forth, the inside pretty much looks like the outside. And then the next thing you need to decide is which side do you want to have your hanger. I have mine on the right side. And what will happen is you'll need to start on the opposite side because we're going to stitch around and then add our hanger at the end. So if you want your hanger on this side, you'll need to start your stitching on this side. If you want your hanger on the same side as me, then you'll need to start your stitching over here because this is the opening of your stocking. All right, so I've got them all lined up. I'm going to do my trim with the same color yarn. Now you can choose and do red or green or gold or whatever color that you like. And we're just going to start with that last stitch on the top because you want it to curve in just a little bit. Join your yarn in. And we're going to evenly place single crochets all the way around the edges. And the way that I do this is I try to place the stitches in the stitches themselves and not the holes in between. And you want to make sure you go through both thicknesses. And on this one, I try to add a lot of stitches because I don't want any holes for the goodies to come out. 
You can see I'm going through the stitch there and the stitch on the back. And I'm just single crocheting through both sides. Now it's real important that you give that a good snug pull. A little string there. There we go. And there might be in, uh, times where you may have to go through a hole. And, and that's okay, but I like to try not to. And just line it up, making as many stitches as you can, nice and close together, following the line of the dog bone around. And see how I'm just going right around the edge. going through the front and the back, stitching them together. And that's why, it, I mean, even if you wanted to put on a different color, it makes a nice trim around the dog bone. Now we're to this inside corner. We want to make sure we get a few extra stitches in there because we don't want that coming apart. And when you're doing something like this, um, a lot of times when you're just edging like say a washcloth, you're not gonna put as many stitches, but I'm putting a lot. I'm stitching close together and putting a lot in there because like I said, I don't want any of the goodies that I'm going to put in here to come out. And this stocking is great for your puppies, but it's also great for anybody who loves dogs. And one of the, uh, places where I have sent a lot of these to is to some of the dog rescues. When people rescue a dog at Christmas time, sometimes they'll take one of these little stockings and they'll fill it with goodies like dog collars and cookies and things for new owners to have when they get a new puppy. Because I, you know me, I think that you should go to the dog rescues and rescue a puppy for Christmas or a dog there's lots of wonderful adult dogs that need rescuing as well, and it's great at Christmas time, rather than going to a breeder and buying a brand new puppy to rescue one that's already out there. All right, so that's what I'm going to continue to do is stitch single crochets, joining the front to the back evenly all the way around until I reach back up here. I started here and I single crocheted all the way around, working around the shape of the bone and I'm back up here. Now this is the opening so we don't want to close it, but what we'd want to do is put a trim on it and so we're going to just go right to that next stitch and stitch single crochets around. And something that I do on this row is I try to stitch just a little bit tighter so that it has a little edge that's going to hold the top because we're not putting any kind of a little cuff on it. We just want a nice little single crochet edge to help it hold its shape, basically. Plus, wear and tear from reaching your hand in and pulling out goodies on the bag. We want the bag on the stocking, I mean, not bag, to hold up. And I'm coming right around to the seam where we started. And I'll go right to that single crochet and then I'll just go right to the next one on the other side. And we'll just work our way around, stitching one single crochet in each of those stitches around the top edge. go. Almost around. The 
just a couple more single crochets. So now I've single crocheted around and I'm back where we started at the top trim. I'm going to slip stitch in that first single crochet across the top, snug that down, and then chain 12. Cut my yarn. Tie that off, and then I'll just use my needle there we go, to attach that. I'll go in, careful not to pull the chain in, <laughs> and I'll just make some stitches until I'm happy that that tie is going to hold because it's got to hold all the goodies up, right? If you hang it up and the hanger doesn't hold up, your goodies might not hold up. <laughs> All right. All right, so here is my dog bone stocking. It's just a big dog bone. Got the trim on it so I can put goodies down inside. And now it's time to decorate it a little bit. Now I'm going to add a bow and I'll show you how to do that. Really, really simple. This one I did with a red bow. And I'm going to show you how to make the bow with the green one. To make the bow, it's really, really easy. We're still using our eye hook. We're going to make a slip knot, and then we're going to chain 75 chains. So here's my 75 chains. And what we're going to do is we're going to place one half double crochet in each chain across. We're going to start in the second chain and to stitch a half double crochet, you yarn over, go in the chain, pull up a loop. You'll have three loops on your hook and you'll just pull that loop right through those three loops. There we go. That's a half double crochet. And we're going to stitch one half double crochet in each of those chains. And because we're starting in this second chain, we'll have 74 half double crochets. I stitched one half double crochet in each of the chains across, but I want my bow to be just a little bit thicker. So I'm going to chain two and I'm going to turn and I'm going to stitch a half double crochet in each of the half double crochets so that my bow is just a little bit thicker. Now, if you want your bow to just be one row of half double crochets, that's totally fine, but I want mine to be just a little bit thicker. So I'm stitching one half double crochet in each of the half double crochets, and then I'll tie off. And I'll show you how to form your crocheted ribbon into a nice bow. I completed the second row of half double crochets. I cut my yarn, tie that off, and then I'm going to take just a minute and weave in my ends because we don't want those showing on our bow. So I'm just going to weave that in, going through some stitches and then clip that off and then I'll need to do the other end I'll 
through some of those stitches. All right, so now we have this piece of ribbon and we wanna make it into a bow. So we're gonna take a long piece of the matching yarn or you can use a different color if you want to. We'll set that aside and move these out of the way. We're gonna take our bow and we're gonna cross it like this. Just kinda of even it out until it's the size that you want. Then we'll take the long piece and we have a shorter end on one end and the longer end on the other. And I just sort of bunch that up and just wrap that around nice and snug. until I'm happy with how it looks. Now I'm looking at this and it looks like this side is longer. So I'm gonna push that over and do a little adjusting until everything is even. Okay, and then I'm going to take these two and tie a knot. And this is the back of the bow. And here's the front. All right, so now I'm going to use these two pieces of string to attach it to my stocking. So here's my stocking. Now I place them at the top. You can place them anywhere you want, or you can just add a fabric bow or ribbon that you buy in the store. All right, so I'm going to thread one end on my needle. I'm going to go through the back and then I'm going to come right through that bow a couple of times. And this just blends in because of the way we made the center. All right, now I'm going to take the other end and I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to go to the back and I'm going to stitch a couple going right through the center of that bow. Now I don't attach the edges or the loops or anything of the bow. I just let them remain floppy. All right, so now I've got my two ends and I want to make sure that I'm under some of those stitches like that. And then I just tie this on. Now, if you're worried that this particular knot is going to come undone, you can add a little fray check or fabric glue, or if it's going to stay inside your house, you can add hot glue. I never recommend something that's going to be outside uh, to use hot glue because I'm afraid it's going to get hot and melt. Of course, if these are in the winter, that might not happen. All right, so there's my bow and there's my dog bone. And one neat thing about the dog bone is you have all this space if you want to add some appliques, some buttons, if you want to embroider your pet or the person you're giving this to's name, has lots of great possibilities. And that's how you make a dog bone stocking for the holidays or Christmas to give as a gift or to use for your own pets. Now you'll notice this ribbon is a lot longer. I made it a lot longer. This is the one that was 75 chains long. So you can do however you want the bow to do. Super easy dog bone crochet pattern.